I always knew that I wanted to be a dad and it was something that I was going to do. I just, I don't know that I was, I think you were definitely ready before I was. I just needed to nudge you a little bit. Inside. Yeah, I mean, I knew that it was fastly approaching and I knew that it would happen soon. I just, I wasn't quite ready yet. But I think a lot of it is just like, because you get so in your head about all the things, but like, oh, I don't know, financially we're in the right place. Do we know what's happening with our careers? We're, we're just moved, to, we're considering moving to Arizona from Los Angeles. And there were just so many like plates in the air and so many things that we were juggling that I was just really worried about it not being the right time. In my head, I was always, the financial thing, like, oh my God, I, I want to be able to, like, we're comfortable, we have fun, but I want to take our kid to Disneyland, and I want to take our kid to New York, and I want to take our kid to New Orleans, and I, I want to do things with our family. So I think we were both on that same page of like, are we in the right place? Can we afford to keep our lifestyle, but adding another being in there? And I just realized that you're never going to be, you will, you'll just continue working for that. You, so the only way to do it is if you want a family, you just gotta do it. When it came to talking about children and like adding another member to our family, uh, you know, the, the conversation had started becoming much more frequent and much more serious. I was pretty set on using a surrogate and having my own kid because I think it just was always kind of a dream of mine to be able to have a kid and look into a child's eyes and see a part of, not only just see a piece of myself, but see a part of like my family. Initially, I was a little bit more hesitant to adopt because of that. The more I spoke to you about it and the more you kind of kept talking to me about it, the more I realized that it didn't matter, and that even if we do adopt now, it doesn't mean that in the future I can never have my own kid. Uh, but I guess you have a few more years. What are you talking about? We're men. We can have babies until I'm we're just 90. Not if you keep that cell phone in your front pocket. I had that, I want to have my own kid, I want him to have my genes. I think the older I got, the more I realized of how that was just kind of a selfish desire on my part. What I really wanted was a child to raise and love and put into the world and yeah. to unleash him to go do good. We decided that we were going to adopt. We ended up going through Arizona's Children's Association, which was an agency that was recommended to us by some friends. But before even that, I remember trying to research some different agencies, and there's so many, and a lot of them are actually religious agencies, which made me a little nervous, being that we were a same-sex same couple, and I didn't know how they were going to feel about that. When we visited Arizona's Children's website, it was very clear that they were very close with the LGBT community. We yeah. didn't even, we were like, yeah, this is the place for us. And we like, the, consider going anywhere else. Yeah, because your first meeting too, they come to your house and Grace, I, Grace <laughs> her girl Grace. Um, so That's she awesome. came over and it was like immediately such a wonderful experience yeah, dealing yeah. with her and you could tell just how warm and how much she wanted to, how warm she was and how much she wanted to help us that we kind of, I think we knew immediately that that was the right fit for us. Yeah. Um, you just kind of know when you get in a room like that, that they're your kind of people. Yeah, absolutely. But even the certification process, which initially sounded very daunting and a little overwhelming, I will say that it, I actually feel like I took a lot from that class and I'm very, very happy that we took it. I, don't, I think we would have been great fathers regardless because because I think innately like we're very nurturing and like, good with children. And, but I do feel like I, I learned a lot and I took a lot from it. One of the biggest things that I feel like I took from that class was just like I felt a lot more prepared going into parenthood. Uh, I think just, I know this is a very general comment, but I think that 
I did. I felt uh, coming out of that class, I just felt more, uh, much more prepared for a lot of situations that I hadn't necessarily thought through, like the reality of what it meant to have a kid and what to do in certain certain emergency situations or what to react to, what to not overreact to. And I think just overall, I felt a lot more confident going into it and ha felt a lot more confident that I would be able to handle any situation that was thrown at me. Until we got the call that we were getting a kid the next day. I mean, that <laughs> and was then a all pretty... that goes out the window <laughs> and you start panicking. Uh, and we were actually pretty specific about what we were looking for. They, you know, they give you a long list of things that you can check of what you're open to, what you're not open to, age ranges, certain behaviors, certain, but we were pretty specific that we were looking for young, and which is also a little bit trickier to get a, a, a baby that's uh, open for adoption through the foster system. Um, and we, we definitely wanted young. We were preferred a boy, but we really wanted to have a boy. So we... Well, I wanted to have a boy first because I wanted him to look out for his little sister. As, <laughs> if we have a as, sister. As if a, we have a sister. We will. If slash when. Anyway, so we were pretty specific about what we were looking for. So they had told us that it would probably be like six months to a year. Like if, yeah. if even it could be even longer than a year because of what we were looking for. We were very open, but we were very specific. I think it's what we were mostly specific about was the age range. And that was what yeah. like, they told us was going to make it very difficult because Typically, and I don't know if it's the same in most states, but especially the state of Arizona, when a the, the state will do anything they can to reunify the the child with their parents. So, and that can be a very lengthy process. So, if if all the parents keep failing to meet the standards or step up to the plate, then finally the state will say, okay, this baby or this is up for adoption. And they always go first to any other family members. So now you're having to see if there's any aunts, uncles, grandparents, anybody that wants the child. And if they don't, if they, they've exhausted all those avenues, then they first go to the foster family that had the baby in their home. And typically, from what we were told, the foster parents that have had a baby in their house, they, they usually want to adopt the child. So it's pretty rare to get a, a child so young that's just open for adoption. But we were like in a place in our lives, we were like, whatever, we're just gonna let the universe do its thing. We went, we were, we're certified, we were putting it out there, we wanna have a child, but uh, we'll just like, we have a lot of other things going on, so we'll just leave it up to the universe. I'm very handy today. Very handy. This was right, um, right before, after, right around the time that we decided to start our YouTube channel. We were on the road, driving to Jerome, and we got a call. Look at Jerome was the first YouTube video that we that we yeah, actually ever so shot. It was before it anything else. It wasn't the first one we put out. But it was the first, one, was we the first shot. one we shot. Yeah. So we were on our way to Jerome in the car. We got a call basically saying, look, we have a kid that needs a place to stay. We were told that this kid was going to be placed with us as a foster situation, temporary. During the day, we got another phone call, and that phone call was, no, he's coming to live with you, and we only want to put him in a home that wants to adopt. Are you willing to adopt this kid? And we had to give a yes or no answer right then, without seeing the kid, without knowing anything other than his age and that he was healthy. We didn't know his background, nothing about it. Um, and so we basically looked at each other and we said, okay. yeah. When we go to meet him, he is in the back seat uh, of this minivan. And we both get out of the car and me and Matt are just, like super nervous. And we walk, start walking around the front of the car and he's sitting in the back seat where you can see him through the windshield and he looks up at us and he just gets this big smile and he smiles. The second we walked around that van and connected eyes with him and he just burst into that giant smile, yeah. it was like immediately we had fallen in love with this kid. I went to go grab him. Does that make you jealous that I got to hold him first? Before you A did? little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I went to grab him and he just put his arms out. He just put his arms out and hugged me so tight. And he didn't have shorts on, it was just like his little diapers because yeah. it was hot outside. Yeah. And his his like... shirt, and he only had one toy with him. As full of, of love that I was, my heart was still kind of broken at the same time because I just, I realized like, this is a beginning 
that this kid has already lived. He's already been through this. And what does he come with? Literally a box that's not even half full of belongings. It was a little box like this size. It was like a little diaper box. And it had a couple pairs of shorts, yeah. a couple t-shirts, and two little toys. Our instinct is just to like scoop this kid up and defend him from everything and give him everything that we can. And that's kind of how I knew that there was no way in hell and we were letting this kid go. At this point, it's still like, you're just, you're not automatically just adopted. No. There's still the time, like you go through this period where he has to be in your home for like six months. One of the things though that we haven't really talked about that was a big thing for us going through this adoption process was the legality of it all being that we were a same sex couple. Uh, because it, initially when we came out of the certification process, it was right when uh, gay marriage was legalized. So In Arizona. In Arizona. So there, the, the whole adoption, all the laws about adoptions were still very unclear and haven't really been addressed yet. So initially when we, went, when we were going through it, they were saying that we were going to be able to adopt as a, as a married couple and that we would both be the legal parents of of our child but then of course Arizona like especially a lot of the conservatives uh, kind of stepped in and started fighting that and so then all of a sudden it became they kind of backtracked some some of the laws and said that one of us would have to be a step parent that only one of us would actually be able to legally adopt uh, our kid and the other person would essentially be like after the process went through and we adopted then the other parent can come on and adopt uh, and be a step parent to the adopted kid yeah basically it, and but we still both had to go through the process we both still had to do everything but one of even but one of us would still not be able to be the parent we struggled with that for a while and then luckily um, they overturned it but by the time our certification was actually up and or finished completed we were able to adopt our son so we actually wanted to introduce you guys to some of our friends they were the ones that referred us to arizona's children they were the ones yeah they referred us to our agency they were actually one of the first couples to be married in the state of arizona they brought the case against the state we wanted to uh, we want to share their story a little bit with you as well uh they're our friends uh, kevin patterson and david patterson patterson I think really, I think both. I think they're, yeah, David Patterson. So let's say, so uh, we're going to take you to meet our friends Kevin and David. Patterson. Your commitment ceremony was when? 2009. 2009. Mm -hmm. And you started talking about kids soon after that then? Yeah, probably about yeah, 2010. 2010. And so he's five years older and we had this thing where he kind of gave me an ultimatum. He's like, this is as old as I want to be. You know, before like the kids are just out of the question, I don't want to be 70 raising kids. And yeah. so we had a time frame, and I knew that I did too. And we were still finishing grad school. And I didn't think that, at the time I didn't think, I was just like, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen for us. And maybe we could just have fun traveling. And right. That's just out of the question. Careers and all that stuff. Yeah. But there was a random moment that we had where he asked me, have you ever been to Disneyland as, a, as an adult? And I hadn't. And I said, no, I haven't been to Disneyland since I was like five. And he's like, do we go? I said, when? How about right now? Things you can do when you're we just go to work. Yeah. So we did. We jumped in the car and we went to Disneyland. And that was life changing. As an adult, just the two of us. I mean, of course we had fun. But seeing all these kids having fun there seeing the parents get to, you know, have that moment with their kids there, that we did make a pact that's going to ever change for me. I said, I do want kids, and I don't know where we're going to start, but I do want kids, and next time we come to Disneyland, like, it's going to be with our own kids. You know, from time to time, we got people saying, oh, well, I have a baby for you. you know, oh, yeah. I would hope so. And that's, yeah, right? That's an awesome gesture. I can't feel more honored than that. But that's complicated. <laughs> but for us, that was not what we were looking for. We were really looking right. for a family, a family unit, unit yeah. that, that was ours. Um, and that may sound selfish, but we wanted this, you know, to be, I don't know if it does, but it, it just, it felt to me like I wanted this wholeness in our home. There is a need here for our kids to have homes. Mm. And as soon as we, we fell into that information, which 
I'm surprised it's not more out there. I'm surprised people don't know how many kids are sitting in the foster system waiting to go to a home, not to sleep in an office. We kind of became overwhelmed with this and felt almost a social responsibility mm -hmm. to reach into our community. It to, was, because we had several people say, you know, certain countries are really easy to adopt from. Oh yeah. You could go this route or that. And so we had all these options on the table for like international adoption, you know, the surrogacy, mm -hmm. the explore that in their state, all sorts of stuff. And, um, you know, none of it just felt right. And it's just that intuitive feeling inside. It's like, that's not how my family's going to grow. We had some people ask us, well, have you ever thought about adopting to the state? And, um, you know, honestly, like, just being straight, I think we had some preconceived notions about it. Yeah. Where I'm like, no, I don't think I want to adopt a kid from the state. And it was just kind of the horror stories that you hear. Right. The worst case scenarios of, you know, you bring this child into the home because you want to expand it, but you don't know all the things they come with, you don't know all the baggage. And I think it was at first a little bit like, there's just no option out there for us. And finally, like, like David said, we looked at a fact sheet about the state of Arizona looking at what does the process look like. And at the time, the fact that they showed us was 16,000 kids. Mm -hmm. Like 16,000 kids are in the Arizona system. And that's a small city. It, it is. And right. you know, that finally hit us and we're like, why would we go overseas or to another state or go through the trouble of bringing you know, a child into the world when there's tons of children, thousands of children here that don't have a place to go. Right. And seeing you know, from the other side, the justice system, what typically happens to the kids that never find a place to go and how it's just, the chances are not in their favor and automatically like, that's it. You know, hearing them say like, okay, so which one of you are going to adopt? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, we're, we're both here. And they're like, well, no, you both have to go through the classes, but which one of you are going to adopt? <laughs> yeah. And I said, how does this work? You know, right. Really? They were explaining very kindly, but they're like, our state is just not set up for families like yours. And the tendencies and the preferences for which we place children and that we can get things done smoothly, you know, with no hiccups, I mean, there's only so much we can do. We realized that really quickly, like, we would have to choose who the parent was. And at the time, on paper, it just made sense that I, I did it. Mm -hmm. um, so I went through the process as the parent, and he had to go through the process because they listed him as a um, eligible cohabitant. You basically have a roommate. Yeah. So he was my roommate. So his roommate. Right. So we, at our final adoption hearing, which should be like the happiest day ever, right? Mm -hmm. The judge is like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad this worked. This is awesome. I'm happy for you guys. This is great. Let's take our picture. Pulls me aside and says, this should be the happiest day of your life. I've got to tell you, if something happens to you, he goes, he is not the parent. And he said, he is legally not any tied to them. And he said, so if something happens to you, by law, like your parents can petition for them, but if the state wants to, he goes, they'll go right back in the system. And he oh said, do you want to hear what I think you should do? And I said, okay. He goes, <laughs> brace yourself. He's like, you need to sue the state of Arizona. I don't, I'm like, how do you sue a state? Like, <laughs> what, what, what does that mean? Like, sue the state of Arizona. Yeah, so it, it just created just these barriers. And I'm like, man, we really just legally, we need the same last name. We need to be married because this is just really getting irritating because we can't seem to do anything together as a unit for that reason. So next thing I know, we're signing papers saying that we we're going to be plaintiffs in this marriage quality case. I had no idea what that meant. And <laughs> I, so here we are, like, you know, part of the case that gets overturned for marriage. And like, here's David and I on the front, like, doing interviews, talking about why marriage equality is needed. At that time, it became this responsibility of, we're not just telling a story. Everyone, we're telling our story, but it has to be told right that it is compelling and it changes hearts and minds and it opens people's perspective on, you know, we're not a same-sex couple that we leave every day with feather boas and we take our children out and do crazy, wacky things. No, um, we have dishes that pile up and we do laundry and, <laughs> you know, we go to school and we come home and do homework and my family looks just like your family does, but it's just, we have two dads. We're moving towards creating this new culture, new society, which I am so excited about, where, where we can reduce that number and prevent kids from being lost in this system.
Thanks for listening to our stories, guys, and uh, going to visit with our friends Kevin and David. We hope that that gives you a little bit of insight into the adoption process. And, you know, there's still a lot of fighting and a long way to go in this country, but uh, I think we're definitely headed in the right direction. My turn? Yeah. This is our nightly routine. I'm the Ross man. We're just a one to be the six with. I just don't want to be too big with the six. It's fine me. I'm a bad with that. You can't smile for me. I'm a real hard life. So hard on me. Yeah. I need to be good. I need to be good. Because my life is good. I have to be rocket. Lay it on me. That's my phone. We don't know what we're doing for our anniversary. And we get to eat all that cake. Yeah, though, we got a lot of cake. So my go wet, how many pot of bummy, how many guys so fanny, I hold a waist come back for the Grammy. Are you gonna do a closing dance? You wanna show a hairy nipple or something? That's not this kind of video. Peace, Peace to the world! <laughs> Dick tap. Hey! Ah, ah. Pause. Goodbye!